Now that we have some drums laid down, I'm going to record the bass track, and I like to do that because the rhythm section usually goes down first, and I like that groove. So I'm going to put in a bass track, but I'm also going to show you how to use the stacked record mode. So the first thing is to add a bass guitar sound to our Cubase project. So I'm going to do that with the sound browser. So I'm going to click on sound browser. And then I'm going to click that all important reset button again. And now I'm going to be looking for instruments in the bass category. And I'm going to further refine this a little bit by going to electric bass. And I'm going to come over here to Halion Sonic SE and just make sure that that's highlighted so that we're looking at the same list. So let's scroll through this list and see if there's something else that uh, might sound a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. Let's try the Precision Round Wound. Well, that's got a more aggressive feel to it. So let's go ahead and use that. So I'm going to double click the Precision Round Wound and then close the sound browser. And now you'll see that it's added a new instrument track to my project window. My bases are always red. I'm a little bit particular about that too. Then I'm going to unrecord enable the drum track and record enable the bass track. And then I'm going to set up my cycle record mode which I've already turned cycle on. You can see that it's enabled down here in the transport panel. However, there's also some settings that I need to make over here, which is my stacked record mode setting. So I'm going to click in this little window on the transport panel and I get this menu. And there's a couple of different options here. In the MIDI record mode, I want every cycle to make new parts. And I'm going to show you why that's important in a moment. But then you can also mix together each individual cycle so you end up with only one mixed event. Or you can use some of these other options like overwriting the previous take with the new one or the previous cycle, if you will, with a new one or keep the very last one. But what I'm going to do is come over here and select the stacked record mode and you'll see why this is so cool in just a moment. So new parts is enabled and stacked mode is enabled. Then I can close that window by clicking outside of it. And then I'm going to do one more thing before I start recording. I'm going to cheat <laughs> because I'm not a very good keyboard player. It's actually hard for me to record keyboard parts, especially bass parts. So I'm going to cheat by turning down the tempo a little bit. So I'm going to come over to my tempo setting. I'm going to double click here and type in something that's a little bit easier for me to keep up with like 140 beats per minute and now the tempo is going to be slowed down and you can do this as much as you want this is one of the oldest tricks in the book you can do this right up until you start to record your audio tracks so as long as your project is all MIDI information and using MIDI tracks and instrument tracks you can change the tempo at will but as soon as you record your first audio track you you can't do that anymore at least not as easily so now that I have my tempo slowed down, I'm going to record in a cycle, but at a slower tempo. And you'll see how this works. So I think I've got a better one than that. So I'm going to record a new take. I didn't like that one either. Let's do one more. I like that one. So then I'm going to hit stop. And you'll notice that the last take that I recorded is now in my project window on that track. See how it says take number five? So the last take that I recorded is now playable. So let's take a listen to that. Let's quantize it a little bit. So I'm going to select that event and hit Q. And I still have my iterative quantize setting enabled. So let's take a listen. Now what happens with all those other takes? Because this is take number five and I recorded several other takes. So where did they go? Well, they're still there. They're just muted in this stacked record mode. So to reveal those other takes, I'm going to hover my mouse over the track boundary here and drag down a couple levels. And now we can see the show lanes button. When you click on the show lanes button, look what happens. Every single track has several 
takes on it in its own individual lane. So I could now come in and listen to any of these parts, but you can see that only the bottom one is enabled. It's nice and brightly colored, where the other ones are gray. The gray means that those parts have been muted out. If I wanted to right now, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, but I could come up here and I could grab my comp tool. It looks like that finger pointing up, and I could choose a different take to use in this particular project. So I'm going to start the playback. So maybe I want to listen to this one. Or this one. Now I still like the last take the best, so I'm going to click on that one. Hit stop. So you can see that when you're recording in stacked mode and using MIDI information on MIDI or instrument tracks, every single take that you make is remembered in its own individual lane. Then you can close up the lanes by clicking the Show Lanes button, and now you've got the take that you want. And I'm going to cheat again just by setting the tempo back to what it was. One other thing I'm going to do really fast. A bass player can just keep all of that material going without any gaps in between. So I'm going to highlight that take, and then I'm going to come under the MIDI pull-down menu, and go to the functions, and I'm going to choose Legato. And what that's going to do is it's going to take out the gaps in between those notes. So now it's going to be nice and smooth. And now in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk to you a bit about overlapping MIDI events.